The photography of the book was really important to me and we tried to embody each personality of the recipe, of each recipe differently because you know they all, they all are different. I love them all equally but differently and they all tell a different story. Jim, what's going on? We're at first day of our photo shoot for the book. Our first recipe is chocolate chip cookies. Um, so they're looking pretty good. Did you see them over there? I am a visual learner and a visual person, so I need to be able to see what a recipe looks like. Ever since I was young, if a recipe didn't have a photo attached, I wouldn't make it. I just, I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't know what it was supposed to turn out like. So I only ever make recipes and still to this day as a grown woman, I only make recipes where there's a photo attached. So I wanted to make sure that every single one of my recipes had a photo. Pouring caramel over a steamed banana pudding. I treasure my cookbooks that have beautiful photography and I wanted people to buy this book and to also treasure it. So I wanted to make sure that the food photography like really stood out, was crystal clear, was just really in your face, like grab you and pull you in kind of stuff. And I think that we really nailed that over the two week process. The food styling and the food photography was the first time where I got to work with a bigger team around the book. So a food photographer, a stylist. So I was very fortunate to work with an LA based photographer named Carla Choi. I really liked her style. I followed her on Instagram. I looked at her website. She was bright and colorful and bold. And that's exactly what I saw my photos being. One thing was that she'd never photographed a cookbook before. She had done food, but she'd never photographed a cookbook. So this was also a learning experience for her, but that didn't, didn't sway me either way. I knew she would be a rock star. She had a lovely demeanor and kind of put me at ease throughout the whole process because you know, you go in, you've got a lot of photos to get through and, and you've got a, a list to like check stuff off. and. You know, she just stayed cool and calm and just uh, just went with the flow and we got everything done. My food and prop stylist was a very unique lady called Kate Martindale and we have become uh, good friends. She has a beautiful style, she has a fantastic eye and she's been doing this for 20 plus years. So luckily Kate allowed us to shoot the photography of the book at her house. And that was in Los Angeles. She has this amazing, amazing home, beautifully styled as you can imagine. And it was just the perfect place for us to display our food. So we used corners of counters. We used all her tables. We went outside, we went inside, anything that we could to make it look different, to make it look unique. And then also to just make it stand alone. Food styling and prop styling is really another way to tell the story of the recipe. You dress it up, you dress it down, you plate it, you put it in an environment that best reflects the recipe. So even before we take the photo, we choose our recipe, we have to style it. Does it go on a plate? Does it go in a bowl? What is the story we're trying to tell with this recipe? Is it comfort food? Is it more fine dining? Is it fancy? and we build the styling and um, the look around the story and around like each in dish individually. So you can see that every recipe in the book has a different photo, a different feel, but it all makes sense together. One tip that Kate gave us before we started shooting the book was to get a little portable printer and as we shot each recipe, we would print off uh, the best photo. And it just gave us a really good way to look overall at the book, to make sure that the recipes were matching with each other, that, th that we kept the same kind of theme all the way throughout the book. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't repeat props, that we didn't repeat styling, that you know we didn't put all our cookies on a tray, that we put them on plates and platters and we held some. And we tried to embody each 
personality of the recipe of each recipe differently because you know they all they all are different I love them all equally but differently and they all tell a different story it was really fun because I got to open up my eyes to different ways to style and you know got me to be a little bit more open-minded with Kate's house we shot cinnamon rolls in a cabinet like we photographed straight into a cabinet and we, I've never done that before. I didn't know you could do that. And so many different things like that that I did with Kate uh, really uh, broadened my, uh, my view. So a little bit like children, you love them all equally, but then you kind of do have your favorites. So some of my favorite photography from the book is uh, of this recipe, Irish fairy cakes. I adore this because Kate really captured how whimsical this recipe is. And she placed the buns on top and got a few little shrubs from the garden and placed them into the cupcakes. The colors of the green and the like little pink throughout, there's a pink flower in one of the buns. It just really pulls together and tells a really lovely story. Like these are Irish fairy cakes. And I think that this photo depicts that perfectly. Homemade jelly donut, I was amazed the day that we shot this because I had no idea what to do. And Kate, without even thinking, went and got a newspaper from her front porch. She brewed a fresh cup of coffee and she stuck the donut on top. And I adore it. I just, I think it's simple. It's, it says so much. I think it, it just tells a lovely story. Another one of my favorites is dinner party chocolate for fish rolls. I adored this because this photo to me says classy. And when my mom made these when I was young, she used to make them for dinner parties and for like grown up guests coming over and everything. So I just thought that these were the fanciest, classiest things you could ever make. So when we went to style them, we kind of judged it up a little, make it a little, made it a little bit more formal, made it a little bit more sophisticated. So we put some brandy in the back, some gold goblets that I actually picked up in a thrift store in Ireland. And then once we piled the profiteroles, we also poured chocolate ganache all over them. So it looks like they're being presented as one big tray of profiteroles for a dinner party or any kind of special occasion. And I just, I think that is really, really beautiful you know, going into something blind and like working with a new stylist and a new photographer. I just wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but um, it was an amazing two week experience. I had got a crash course in food photography and food styling. I was more so excited to send the photography off to the publisher and to see what they thought, because I just knew how much work as a team we put into it. And, you know, I sent them the manuscript, they read the titles of the recipes, you know, they knew the names of them, but these photos really told the story of the recipe. And when we sent them off to the publisher, I was excited to see, and they absolutely loved them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel? Relieved, <laughs> feel relieved. Um, super proud. It's going to be gorgeous. I don't think I could have imagined it was going to look this good. Carla, your favorite. Mine is easy. It's this one. Absolutely. I'm just gonna start off by saying being a Libra. <laughs> This one has been my favorite since we did it. I, lo I love it because of course it, it like kind of like embraces all the things that I am, the red velvet and the tray and everything. I think it is the coconut sevabredo. I think the pineapple upside down cake. Oh, that was one of my yeah, favorite. I think that's yeah, Kate's favorite, so favorite too. Fun. That one's so fun. I would say out of all 115, sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> It got, it got in Gemma's head that that was my favorite. That was from day one. That's so funny. And so that became my favorite. But I would actually say, just for oh, really? oh, wow, yeah. sentimentality, I, I love the I Funfetti love cupcakes because that was a episode zero, bigger, bolder baking episode. <laughs>